Hey everybody, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by my bookie, because he's my bookie. Football is back. That's right, everybody. I can't even believe it. All of a sudden, uh, my friend started texting me, have you seen the score? Are you watching this game? I mean, I am pumped. I love college football. I like pro football. I love the Patriots. I'm excited. You want to make some extra money? You like easy money? Well, thanks to my bookie and their lock of the season, if either team scores in the NFL season opener, you win. That's right. You're guaranteed to win. If you didn't know a game hasn't ended 0-0 since World War II, then this is a sure bet. Head to mybookie.ag, select look lock of the season, and if any team scores between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Bucks, you win. The best you can make is one you can. The best bet you can make is one you can't lose. I bet I learn how to read soon. My mm. bookie is also hosting several exclusive contests, including their $100,000 super contest. The best part is it only costs $10 to enter. There's big money on the line this season, so don't wait to get in the game. Join now, Marcus. You got that right. Head to mybookie.ag today and use our promo code TUESDAYS and instantly double your first deposit. That's Double your funds to double your winnings. Again, that's promo code Tuesdays to receive double your first deposit and get started with my bookie today. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up! And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. All right. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories, folks. It's going to be a weird one, a strange one, a wacky one. As you can see, I'm still in a cabin in the woods. I'm looking out on beautiful Lake George. I like to call it Lake Gorge. Us. Ah, I caught it. I caught it. Uh, It stinks. I like it. That's so weird. You're, 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 You're like... Secret window. You're you that. Uh, you're you're in the movie cabin in the woods. You're out there. You're in misery. I feel like the somebody's gonna break your ankles with a sledgehammer. I'm you're out so here. far gone. I'm out here, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute of it. And there's storm clouds on the horizon. I mean, this house is just spectacular. I mean, look at this motherfucker. The lake is right out there. I'm surrounded by mountains. I have no reception, no Wi-Fi. I hate these. Do you hate these people like I do? They go, I like to escape up into the mountains, no reception, no Wi-Fi. And I'm like, well, just put your phone in a drawer (laughs) because you have an emergency. I'm out. I can't contact anybody. It's like, it's so, no, I got these pretentious people that are like, I like to be in the woods where you can't even use a phone. Right. Yeah. Just turn the phone off and go walk around the neighborhood. I'm with you. I mean, look, I get the nature, the view, the the honeydew is nice, but you can turn your phone off anytime. Exactly. And I've had about 15 situations here where, and one just now, we go to record, the Wi Fi has been perfect, lights out or lights on, whatever. Yeah. And right when we try to record, the Wi Fi goes out. It sucked uh, fucking my father's dick and it was disappointing, but now it seems to be on. I hope it doesn't fuck up again. But I told you on the, on the Patreon bonus, join that Patreon, folks. Nice new bonus out that the, the, Inter- not the internet, the electricity went out and with yeah. it, the internet. And you just can't contact anybody. No. And as soon as I leave the house, there's no reception. So I got to drive 25 minutes to get a text. And of course, you know, I drive to Super Walmart because it's the only thing around. I get 18 minutes. All of a sudden, the reception comes back on. I get a text going, hey, can you take me up to the uh, Super Walmart? Ah. I, go, I just got the text. I would have turned around, but I, I'm, I'm too far gone now. Isn't it fascinating? These things we never had 15 years ago. Now, if we don't have them, our lives are ruined. Like, my parents were just in Ida. You know, they're driving up and down Louisiana, trying to get power, trying to get reception, trying to get anal, whatever it is. And then they, they got to go to Baton Rouge. It's an hour away because they're dying to charge their phones. And yet, when I was growing up, we didn't have a phone. But now we have to. Well, you also, but you did have... A landline, and now there's sure. no landline, so you can't even talk to anybody. And here, I'm I'm in a place here with it's just a 
I can't even talk about what's going on. It's too emotional. I'm going to start crying. We uh, wrapped most of the up, actors. Uh, it's, it's, it's too much up here. But I'm making this movie, and it's a movie about a family uh, not too dissimilar from mine. And yep. we're shooting in a house. And so the whole cast is together all day, every day. And then I got the best house because I'm an EP and star and, and writer. And wow. so everybody just comes over every day. And, and don't you love this? We don't even text anymore. For a while, it was like, hey, party at my house. Now they just show up, these whippersnappers. The pop-in. I thought you hated the pop-in. Oh, I love a pop-in in the woods. Popping in the city, I'm not so sure about, but popping in the woods, come I on over. A woods pop in is different because uh, there's six people in your life, you you you, you know them all, you, you're comfortable with all of them, but a, a city pop in is terrifying. It could be your aunt, could be a clan member, it could be a comic. So those are all the same person, but uh, they got a <laughs> lake right here. That's the other thing is I'm on the beach. I got a beachfront house here. Yeah. And so sometimes I'll just look out the window and see some of my castmates, my friends, my buddies, my pals just swimming in the lake. So I go, hey, come on up. And they went, wow. we'll be up there. Or I'll go down and join them and fuck in the river. Wow, right? it's so quaint. that Maybe it's the way we're supposed to be. I'm telling you, Mark, I'm a changed man. I'm a new man. I, day one, I, it's the most spiritual experience of my life. I wake up, I walk straight out of my house, put on some shorts and go straight into the lake. I've been awake for five minutes, and I've been in a lake for three minutes. It's a waking lake. It's a waking lake. But what about the bugs, the, the, the turnips, the sea scallops? What about all the stingrays? You never know what's in a lake. An ocean, I feel like I can go ankle deep and Kaepernick and do a kneel and whatever. But the lake, it's just it's, it's free for all. It's mucky. It's dark. It could be a, a possum in there. You don't know what lake you're talking about here. I don't know what they got in Lake... Lake French or whatever the fuck in New Orleans, I'm, but I'm Lake Flaccid. This is this is first of all, you you know me. I'm an ocean guy. It's yes. spiritual. It heals. I've it always heals. been an ocean guy. I hate lakes. I never spent any time in a lake my whole life. Never a lake family. Always an ocean family. Sure. I love the ocean. I love the ocean. The motion. The the salt. The sea. The sharks. The whole thing. The waves. Never yeah. been a lake guy. Always felt like you do. Creeped out by lakes. But this lake, Lake George crystal clear i mean it's sand it's soft sand and the fish they're not even afraid of humans they come right up they kiss your little your, your tits and your and your your toes bobby kelly caught seven fish out here what with his mouth <laughs> he, was just, <laughs> ah, he pulled a full <laughs> wet bear I'm t he, there's just fish everywhere they swim right up to you they, they kiss your nuts it, it's just unbelievable crystal clear and it's mountains jerry I go straight into the lake, I come out, I meditate, and I think I need to move to the woods. I think you do. You're full of life, you're fresh, you look rested. I can't believe it. Just The lake always seemed good. You see the jet ski and the guy with the boat with the six-pack, but I don't know, I've swam in some lakes and there's some foliage that hits you on the taint and it wiggles and... I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I was at the wrong lake, but can we get another swivel to see that thing one more time? You gotta it's come such up a to view. Lake. You got to come up to Lake Joy. I don't know if you can see out there. Wow. It's hard to see because the way I'm placed. Let me try to move the computer oh, to see some I mean, lake out there. 38 windows. That, that table's the size of my dad's ass. I mean, this is huge. I should be careful because someone's going to show up at my house tomorrow because I forget I'm still going to be here when this comes out. Because <laughs> it's true. a pretty that's definitive true. house. I got the best house in town. You got that right. I mean, you got the best <laughs> house in, in Mass. But, folks, uh, we're sorry about the Zoom, by the way, but uh, the man is a, a movie star, so we got to make it work, and uh, we don't want to skip a week. And also, you get to see the goods. You got eight pounds of Tupperware behind you. I know. Well, we finally had the cleaner come over yesterday because every night, I mean, literally everyone comes over. I got 20 people here every night, which is my dream. It's my dream, Jerry. I got a whole family. It's I created a fictional family yes. based on my family. And then they became a real fam. I mean, there's layers here. It's layers upon layers. And every night they're over here. I got this big, long wooden table with the lake on it. Best table I've ever wow. seen. Wow. And then we have like this round table. And there's a lot of comics in the cast. And we're telling old stories. And Nick DiPaolo is here. Whatever you feel about his, his politics, his sure. views, his things. I mean, sure, he says some nutty things and people, whatever. 
There's nobody in the history of the planet that is funnier than this human being. I mean, <laughs> I, I said it to you before. It's like a disorder. He can't not. It's like a reflex. These jokes yeah. just come out. It, it's it's you can't even believe how funny the person is. I'm on the floor laughing, literally rolling around like deaf comedy jam. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chris Walsh is here, one of my oldest friends, one of my best friends. And then there's just a bunch of new people I met and Tony V. And we're just telling all these old stories. And we never run out. That's what wow. it makes me realize we, we have lived this rich, full, comedic life. We have not told a story a second time. 12 days, every wow. night, all night. Remember this guy? What about that bit? And then we're all just telling each other other people's bits and just howling, laughing, like, what a great bit. And, and Nick has this wheezy laugh, and we're just having the best time of my life. I don't want to leave. We wrapped most of the cast yesterday. I have one more day, and everyone's hanging out for two more days. But when I leave here, I'm just going to be a, a puddle. Yeah, well, so many, so many uh, things i got to bring up. One, isn't it fascinating to think about Three months ago or two months ago, and you were, you were freaking out. You're pulling your hair out over this movie. You're like, "What am I gonna do?" You threw your hat on the ground. You jumped on it. You're like, "This is gonna be a nightmare." It's so much work. It's so much stress and anxiety. And now you're you're in heaven, literally. In, Look at this with the the lake. You're Robert Lake. I'm in hog heaven. Well, that's the thing is, you know, we had we, we shot the first week, and then day two, there's all this COVID protocols. By the way, the uh, COVID, our COVID guy's a fan, which is exciting. Hey, Anthony. queef it up. Nice guy. So there's Tell all them. this COVID fear, because if someone gets sick, the movie's shut down. Ah. And we're a low-budget movie with a small window to shoot, because we got ah. other stuff going on, and it's supposed to be summer, and it wants, if you lose the summer, then the movie looks stupid. You got to paint the leaves. We don't have the money for that. So maybe I told this story already. Day two of filming... I was exhausted. 12 hour days all day. I'm in every scene. I got multiple jobs on the movie. So I'm heading back to the hotel because we're using my apartment as a location, which is insane. And I text Sarah and I go, Woo, I am gassed. I'm done. I'm finally coming home. We're going to snuggle. We're going to fuck. We're going to kiss on the twat. Can't wait to see you. She texts back. Uh, the guy I was with in Chicago on Sunday just tested positive. This is ah. two days into filming. And I was like, oh, my God, what, how long did she's like, we hung out for three hours and we hugged and I blew him. So I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> we're fucked. And it just like right away, I was like, I, and I tried to be zen about it. I went, well, I got to live my dream for two days. It's going to get shut down. Big whoop. But Sarah being a good person, she wore her mask inside. She made sure wow. we got a table outside. They were like, we have tables available inside. And she was like, ah, we'll wait. Well, we want something outside. Yeah. So she never got sick, fortunately. And then we had to move up to upstate to shoot up here. And the hurricane came, the first hurricane, then the second hurricane. I was like, no one's going to be able to make it. Someone's going to test positive for COVID. Nobody has. We're at the end. Not one positive test the entire time. And Wow. It's, it's a like lot anything of negativity else. over you, there. You come out the back end and you're like, "Woo, what a time!" Yeah. It's just been a, a beautiful spiritual experience. And I got to tell you, buddy, please. I think we made a great ass. movie. I think we oh. got a great movie. I hope so, because I wouldn't want you critiquing it. We've all seen how that goes. Don't show it to Ron. On. I, I won't. I, I don't even want Ron to see it. I wouldn't let him read the script. But there's these moments you have that thought of like, and the winner is. Joe List, and I, you know, I button the button. You know when they get up and they button the one button and they, they, they act all stoic and they shake hands with their mom or whatever? Yes. But then I have that, and then I'm in the shower, and I just see that little green splatter with like a 7% next to it. Ah, that's terrifying. Yeah, that's the new Oscar, because I feel like the Oscars are almost kind of fizzled out with the, the we can't have a host anymore, and you know it's all zoomed up and digital. So the Rotten Tomatoes thing is a little more realistic. Yeah, well, this cast and crew, I don't think we're going to be getting any Oscar noms. <laughs> Damn it. So funny. He was on the way at one point, and now he's not. But isn't it fascinating, too? Like, you love this crew. You get your bond with the crew. It's boot camp. You're all together every night having beers, telling stories. And then when the movie ends, you just kind of go, all right. Like, I was blown away when Seinfeld ended, and they didn't all hang out every day. I thought they all got lunch and... You know, he called her Elaine. I thought they uh, got each other in a headlock and a noogie and, and a credit card swipe. Yeah, it's it's weird. And then, well, it's kind of like my wedding, you might recall. 
after my wedding, I sobbed for like 10 hours. I had to call Alan every 10 minutes on the hour or whatever. <laughs> that didn't make sense. But because you're like, that group will never be together again. That celebratory to have all those people, to have Nick Griffin and my aunt Donna both dancing on the same dance floor. And this is like this now. I'm like, I can never come back to Lake George and I, you want to have a reunion, but I'm like, let's have a reunion next week. Come on, yes. let's get all of us together. It's just such a great bonding experience. Plus, you're like acting and getting into these emotions and feelings. And and the craziest part is, you know, Louis and I, we wrote it together. So we're like, we were pushing each other in the bushes. And you're like, maybe he'll say that. And then he says that. Yeah, that's good. And then you're sitting here watching people act it out better than you expected even. And they bring their own thing to it. It's just powerful, and I don't know how I'm going to go back to telling dick jokes at Helium in Philadelphia, September 23rd. Ooh, the 23rd. You'll get it back. It's in your bones, fatty. It's in there. It's It feels far away, but it's coming back. And uh, Can I ask a, a, maybe a, a due date idea? Is it like a Puerto Rican kid? Are we never going to know when it's coming out? What are we talking here? Lance well, Bass? I think nine months if we don't abort it, uh, which I think is Texas. illegal now. I'm only I'm not watching the news. I just get little snippets here and there. It seems like a lot of horrible shit's happening. Texas shit the bed. They, they snip the tip on the old abortion. Uh, I think it's like six weeks in. The whole thing's crazy. I think they're making a big push to get out the uh, the blues. Get, get out of here. This is our state, Dickless. Ah, interesting that's well, my theory i can't i can't i'm not watching any that's the other thing i'm so happy i'm not looking at any news no twitter no nothing it's just i'm just living and swimming out here but anyways i don't know i don't know how it works uh we're editing it as we shoot but there's a lot of post-op and everything and you got to add the sound and the music the sound of music the hills are alive so i'm not sure but Juice. it's a movie about summer so i'm thinking next late spring into the summer kind of make it be a summer hit possibly yeah Ooh, summer i like shit. it isn't that weird too you're like oh it'll come out next year you're like next year that'll never happen and then boom it's here before you know it well that's the weird thing about this is my whole life has been what are we going to do this we got to cast this person we're going to stay there where's she staying where's he staying are we going to get a drone what kind of camera who's directing blah 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 and now it's all past it's all over it's just that's never to come life. back it's all about the niblets. You know, if you look at everything, a movie, a build a house, it's such a huge, uh, what's the word? Not burden, but it's a, it's a huge feat. Mm -hmm. But if you just nibble away, eventually you'll eat that pussy. Yeah, exactly. I dated a girl with huge feet, and uh, I got a mug here that's from the house. Journey, the journey is the reward. Ooh. <laughs> Put that <laughs> you in your just, pipe and blow me. You just relapsed. Look at that. Man, but, that's true. I, I read all these self-help shit because I'm such a queef. But uh, one of them had, was a great little nugget. It said, don't have goals, have a system. Mm. Meaning, don't just say, hey, I'm going to get an HBO special. That's my goal. No, go. I'm going to write every day for an hour. And then it'll right. probably come quicker than if you, you know, just say, that's my goal. I read a book that said if you want to come quicker, stick a thumb in your ass. Hey, Hello, folks. Nothing wrong with that. That's a that's a short book. <laughs> you like these glasses because they're movie glasses. They're for oh, the character. Oh, I didn't notice. Oh yeah, they're a little big. I think they're, they're a little frames. bit big. Yeah, it's quite big. Yeah, those are ladies' glasses. <laughs> you got lady frames, <laughs> Adam. Uh, Liz Claiborne. Uh, no, they look all right. I think I like the old ones more, but. I didn't even notice, so that's a good sign. I'm going back to the other with Gloria Vanderbilt collection. There it is. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> look, look, look. The Gloria Vanderbilt collection. Anyway, well, I bet so, you, you were eating four of these a day and ch chasing it down with a Yoo-Hoo. <laughs> that's what I, by the way, I've gained about 25 pounds, and I appear shirtless in the movie, which is like oh. the last thing we shot. I've been eating boxes of yodels because I stress eat because you're, you're shooting all day, and you don't know right. when you're going to eat or how you're going to eat or whatever, so you come home. And you know that feeling, if you just want to reward yourself, I don't drink, I don't blow any people, so I've just been eating yodels, and by the way, Tony V, brilliant comic, who appeared on Seinfeld, Clicky, yeah. the funny umbrella guy. salesman, oh, so funny, just a great guy, but he's a big cigar guy, he smokes a couple a day, so when you're, I'm a cigar smoker, I usually smoke like maybe 20 a year, maybe. Okay, 
That's fair. That's if I'm in Key West or Aruba and I have a deck and it's warm out. But he smokes two, three a day. So if he's there, he just goes, you want a cigar? I go, ah, what the fuck? So I'm smoking. I've smoked about 85 cigars. I've eaten seven boxes of yodels. Uh, nothing but pizza, chicken parm, burgers. I mean, I am fat. I'm a fat person. Wow. What is a yodel? I hear yodel all the time. I know it's a fat blonde lady with a big horn, but what the hell is it in a cookie shape? I think they're all, I'm out of them right now. It's like a yodel. It's, it is <laughs> shit. Oh, wait. That's not how you do it. Yeah. It looks like a little black shit, like a little like bloop. It's like a tube with cream and cake, like a devil dog. Is it swir- is swirly in the middle? It's, it's swirl in the middle. It's a little black dick that you bite into, and then cum comes out of it. Oh, boy. That sounds like my fantasy. That's, I think we call that a Swiss roll, where I'm bang, back where I'm from. It's similar to a Swiss roll, but this, it's not like it's a local thing. It's a, it's a Drake's. There's, there's Drake's and there's Little Debbie. I think that's Little Debbie. Yes. And there's Fat Debbie. That's my aunt. And then this is Drake's. <laughs> Ah, yeah, I'm a little... De- I don't know. Drake was out of my world. I'm, I'm homophobic. I go with the little girl. Uh, that's fair. That's called a pedophile. But um, uh-huh. they're, they're really fun, and I'm just eating packs and packs of those. I'm fat, and... Uh, they're so good. It's gross. I just... It's, but I, I don't know. I'm all choked up and filled with jizz. Good, good for you, though. You're living life. You're doing crazy shit. You're doing something you've never done before, which is a scary... Ex- excursion and you just dove into the lake with your fat ass head first and uh, I, I think it's a great move I think it's going to be very exciting I can't wait to watch yeah I think you're going to like it I hope you like it it's very funny but maybe people will hate it and I might suck I'm in every scene I keep going uh, and being like am I alright and everyone's like no no it's fine so that's the fear is like the movie's great they should have cast somebody which was my idea I was like we got to get an actor and yeah. uh, but whatever We'll see how it comes out, but the, the I think it's the cast is just unbelievable and so fun and so funny, and there's uh, uh just a I love every single cast member so much I just I love them. It'd be tough to cast you though because then you'd have, it always goes the hotter guy is you, and then you're like, well the mouth is too big, the the teeth are perfect, the you know there's there's less fat on them. The forehead is normal. It wouldn't work. You need you. Yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> I was thinking Chalamet, Timothy Chalamet. Can't you Ooh, see it? Well, you got to get some some twink glasses, maybe cut the hair on the sides. Yeah, that's something. Some yeah, red they shoes. Jacked his teeth up or whatever, but uh, I played myself, I guess. I, I think I did okay, though. I had some fun moments, got some emotion out. It, it, it's really great. I mean, this cast is killer. I mean... There's one of them, there's a woman in the movie that uh, is kind of my, my, my bud in the movie, and this woman's going to be a movie star. I'm, I'm oh, wow. calling it, I'm telling you right now. I'm talking Julia Roberts, uh, Denzel Washington, a movie star. I'm calling it, it's here, and I'm going to claim all her success when it happens. That can only help you, Fatty. I mean, if she blows up, they're going to go back. What else has she done? Let's see the catalog, and then you're in. Oh, she's blowing up. I mean, just a real beauty with uh, amazing skills. Everybody was so good. Everybody was so much better than we... Th- we knew they would be good, but they were like 10 times better than we thought. And we improvised. And DePaulo and Chris Walsh are like an improv team. Wow. Amazing. And they're like... They, f- they fight in character. It's, I, I think people are going to really love it. Man, oh, this is so fun. I feel like I've always watched movies, and I've never really been in on the, on the behind the scenes on the ground floor. So this is exciting. I I PA'd on a few movies, production assistant, horrible job, but that craft service is there. Do you guys have that? That's why I'm fat. I mean, I'm eating cookies. I'm shoving tea up my ass, yodels, cookies, and, and then I'm the star of the movie, so they're like, hey, he likes cookies, so bring in some cookies. I, I, I got to wow. show you. I got about seven boxes of cookies over here. Let me find I them. know. You look like a pothead on Christmas. I, you got to bring me some of those. I'm dying here. I had the cleaner over. I don't know where anything is now. Hate the cleaner. But anyway, yeah, there's tons of tons of food, but I, I, sh- I should move on. I'll talk more about it as it comes. But when it comes out, then I'll have some stories because we want to keep a little bit of uh, secrecy, whatever. And then sure. once people see it, then you can go, in this scene, this was happening. In that scene, that was happening. But wait till you see these actors. I mean, you're going to be blown away. I can't wait, Fatty. I'm all over it. I've got the popcorn ready. I'm pumped. 
Oh man, it's unbelievable. These people that play the parents, I, they're like they're real pros and uh, unbelievable, mind blowing. The guy that plays my dad, you're gonna cry. You'll cry. No, I'm dead inside. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm telling you, you'll cry. All right, all right. I I, I got uh, I got so much here. I don't know where to begin. I, I've got loads. I'm gonna put on your back here. I know we haven't recorded in seven weeks, so I imagine there's a lot happening here. A lot has happened. Uh, let me just start with this, and then we'll we'll get to the uh, the you know what's. But I got the car back. So Where was it? It was being fixed in Jersey by my guy, and uh, they're the best in the biz. He put new seats, new stereo, new lights, uh, fixed the suspension, stiffened it up, new wheels, new rims. They went under that bitch, shit, you know, hosed out all the schmegma and period blood and everything, and spit shined it, fixed all the cranks, the window, the speedometer. I mean, they fine tuned this Nazi. Ooh, I can't wait. Yeah, so the whole thing took a year. And this party where you're like, oh, God, it's kind of nice not having to park that fucking thing every day. And it's it's nice knowing it's being worked on. But every day it's there. That ticks up in price. Don't forget that. Sure. I mean, a year to fix a car. You might as well uh, build a new car. I know. I know. It, it, it's got such good bones, though. You want those bones. Love a bone. I got a ton of bones. John Bones Jones. So, but the guy's like, I can't give it to you without plates. I need plates. Because he's like... You're coming to the stress factory in New Brunswick. The the shop is in Jersey. I will bring it to you, but I need to pick up plates because I'm not going to be, I'm not you. I'm not going to go drive this classic car around with no plates and no registration. You come guzzling queef. I said, ah, sure. it's fair. Very fair. So I had to go to the DMV, but it was such a busy week with all this stuff and, and gigs and everything. I had to knock this DMV out in two days. I had two days to get plates. So I go to the DMV. And they say, hey, you got to have this printed out, and you got to make an appointment now because of COVID. It's a whole different world out there. Oh, boy. So I go, all right, well, I guess I'll come back tomorrow. So now that's one whole day shocked because you try to make an appointment right there, and they won't, they're will not they all taken up. So I make an appointment the next day, and then I go, wait a minute. I, I got the appointment at 11. I got a pod at 1. I got to knock this whole thing out. So then... I text Salacuse. I got to print this thing out for the DMV. Can you print it out? Because I don't have a printer. He says, yeah. So I hightail it up to Salacuse's house, grab the printout, fill it out in an Uber on the way to the DMV. I make it on time, get out of the Uber, run in there with all my paperwork. The guy goes, you got your reservation? I said, you better believe it. He goes, let me see it on your phone. Left the phone in the Uber. Oh, come on with the leaving the phone. I know. Nightmare. Nightmare, fatty. So I, I ran outside like maybe I can catch him as he's at a red light. He's gone. The paper, the DMV papers are blowing in the wind. I'm running down 8th Avenue. He's gone. It's a Toyota Camry. It's black. He's got a turban on. He blends right in. Oh, my God. So now I got no plates and no phone. That's the worst, like we were talking about earlier. You got to have a phone. You got to have it. I'm missing calls. People are like, where are you? I'm getting emails like, hey, I'm trying to find you. You coming here? What's the deal? You, you're on a show tonight? I was like, ah, I'm, I'm carrying my iPad around like a fat kid in the 90s. I'm like, I got this big iPad all over the place. I'm bringing it everywhere. I look like a weirdo. Oh, that sucks. I hate the iPad. The no phone is just brutal. Like I said, if you can choose to not be on it, but you have it because... When someone reaches out and you just feel completely out of touch and you need 911 and, uh, you know, yeah. all that shit. Google Maps, your email, a podcast. Uh, walking around without a podcast or music playing, you feel like a, a hobo. I know. No flashlight. And also, I, I can't find my AirPods right now. Bobby Kelly was my roommate. I think he took them. And I'm already sitting here talking to you currently, and my mind is half on AirPods. I'm like, what am I going to do? Walk around and not listen to music? Exactly. Then you put your old headphones in. You're like, well, this is weird, but these headphones don't match the phone, and they got us by the cojones. I know, and I can't even talk on the phone like this, like an asshole. I need no. the, the thing. I need my hands. I got to jerk off while I'm talking to my mom. Need the hands, mom jerk. I get it. So uh, I have a show that night with the no phone, and it's pouring. It's Ida, baby. Ida came from down low and hit up top. It went from the dick to the nips. Now it's up in New York. I know, I, and, and everyone talked about the hurricane before, and Henri or Henry, whatever the fuck. Some and French bitch. Nothing happened, and then now, Ida, no one even talks about up here anyways, and then it crushes us. 
Exactly. Crushed. The whole city's in ruin. The cellar flooded. I mean, everybody, 14 people died in New York over this shit. Crazy. And New Jersey had the most deaths of any state. I didn't know that. Well, this city is not built for floods. It's not ready for the squirter. And uh, so I'm out here in the in the, wood, the flood with no phone. I have a show on Wall Street, which, as you know, living in Manhattan or living in New York, Wall Street, it's, it's weird down there at night. No one goes there. It's all shut down. It's dark. It's eerie. Very strange uh, place. Yes. Yeah. So I show up to Wall Street, and it's one of those addresses. I used to deliver pizza. It's one of those addresses where you're like, 92 Pearl Street. Now I'm all off phone. I got no phone. So I'm I'm looking at maps on the wall. I'm trying to put it all together. I'm asking people, hey, where's Pearl Street? People are like, oh, you know, it's pouring rain. I'm soaking wet. I got the iPad. Now I go up and I'm looking over 92 Pearl Street. I got 88, 90, 94. Oh, I hate these addresses. Don't you hate that? That's the bane of my twat. I fucking want to kill myself. I never know. Sometimes it's not even like that. Sometimes it'll be like 57, 59, 308. And you're like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? What, did there we, used to be 175 houses in between these two houses? I know. We got some special needs, Twink, doing the doing the numbers out here because it's all top. I, these mailmen should get blown. To get blow them in sleet and snow and rain, blow them. Or well, women. They, get, they get big calves and occasionally they murder people. But True. so those are some benefits, but I agree. All these these people are out there working for a living. By the way, we're recording this on Labor Day, so high five to the unions and the workers. I think that's what Labor Day is about or something. I don't I know. I think. Who Maybe cares? pregnancy. But yeah, uh, so I go up I go into a restaurant, and this is where it gets quirky. It felt like after hours, the movie. I go into a restaurant and I go, Hey, do you guys know where ninety two Pearl Street is? And the lady goes are you Mark Norman? I'm a huge Tuesday. I'm a fan. Oh, my God. And I'm soaking wet. I look like a wet cat. I'm shivering. I got a broken umbrella. I look like Ben Franklin. And she's like, uh, oh, my God, let's get a photo. So I take a wet photo with her. That was fun. And she's like, never heard of it. We're 88 Pearl Street. I don't know anything about 92. Why don't you Google it? And you go, da. So then she looks it up. She's like, I don't, I don't see it anywhere. I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, fuck. So I leave there. You're back out in the rain, the wind, whoosh, 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 pushing the umbrella all over the place. And eventually I pop into a kava. What do you know about kava? I see kava. It's yellow and black writing or something like that. Yes, or yes. It's kind of like, away, Chipo- Jack. It's like Chipotle, but with healthy shit, I think. No, it's Chipotle, but I think it's Middle Eastern-y. Oh, it's like, oh, yeah, I went there. Is it Mediterranean or Middle East? I can't tell. One of the places they hate women. All right, well, that's most of the planet but whatever uh Uh, kava yeah i've had kava doesn't kava mean cow or that's vodka 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 is cow kava is food is that what uh anthony hopkins with a little kava bean (laughs) that's fava bean oh that's that's fava fava. shit that's just a kind of bean in the father of the bride and a hell of a football player that brett fava But yeah, so I go into Kava and I'm I'm on edge. I, I'm soaking wet like a wet cat. I, I got no phone. I'm just sitting there with the iPad. The iPad broke because the water got in there, fatty. Oh, so the iPad. It's a that thing is piece of junk. It's it's the it's the worst thing ever. It's the opposite of a vagina. It doesn't get wet. And uh, so I go I up to the pad. guy. I'm like, give me this, give me that. And I was in such a zing and zang and moment. You're never funnier than when you're annoyed. Yeah, I suppose so. Annoying is funny. Yeah, you just you just you don't care. You're you're zinging. You're zinging. You're the the anger is fueling you. And I was killing with the uh, the staff. Got a free bowl. Oh wow, a free kava, free kav. So, uh, kav I got muscle. the free bowl. So that was something. You know, I'm 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 in I'm miserable. So I did something I never do. I go home and I email the guy like, Hey man, I looked. I'm soaked. I tried. I uh, I went to Kava. I asked everybody. I asked the restaurant. They said no dice, and I, I went home. And he was like, "Oh, you missed out. It was the best show ever, bro." You know that whole thing. And I was like, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really tried." And then I went to the cellar, and it flooded. And I uh, hung out with Will Sylvins the whole night and had a good time. Love Will. I, I got some more questions, but we got to throw in some oh. uh, some words from our sponsors here. Sure, uh, folks. Native deodorant. We got to love it. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Native. There's a new promo code. It's Tuesdays with Stories. That's the new promo code 
folks, I'm out here in the woods and I'm working hard. But some of these crew members, I, God bless them. They're, they're blue collar guys. They're rigging lights. They're spending all this time. They're, they're shifting and making sure everyone's safe and lit. But we're all in a hot, hot house with no AC and the sun is blazing and it really starts to smell. And I thought to myself, I wish some of this cast and crew and myself had a tube of native deodorant. Because if you ain't wearing a good deodorant, you can really stink up a house. And so you got to get some native because native cares about what you put on your body. They want to stop you from stinking the right way. You know native from their legendary aluminum-free deodorant, but they take that same philosophy and made body wash, toothpaste, mineral-based sunscreen, a broad-spectrum SPF 30 for your face and body. You need sunblock, folks. It's lightweight, it absorbs quickly, and you can choose between unscented or coconut and pineapple. Oh, my God. Native's on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine. Native's products work against odor with simple ingredients that smell great, get deodorant and body wash and amazing scents like coconut and vanilla, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose, and more. Tell them how to do it, Marcus. You can even build your own personalized product bundles. Mix and match three of your favorite scents. I like the lavender. And keep them on rotation so you got something for every occasion. Stay fresh, stay clean with Native by going to nativedo.com slash Tuesdays with stories. All one word, the whole nine, folks. Promo code Tuesdays with stories. At checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout for 20% off your first order. Woo! We're also brought to you by Raycon, baby. These are some great earbuds. I love them. Here's a little secret. If you're feeling a little social anxiety, the best thing to do is throw that puppy in your ear, get your favorite song going, meditation, podcast. I just had no phone. I was killing for a pod. I was killing for some music. You can't meditate. You got nothing left. So hold on to these Raycons. Get yourself some. I like to listen to smooth jazz while I jerk it. Maybe for you fatties, listen to Tuesday Stories. This is how you get in the zone, by listening to us. Love it. I listen to music before a show. I listen to music on the way to the show. I need these pods. I, I need these earbuds. They, they help. So uh, Raycon wireless earbuds are half the price of other premium audio brands, and they just sound good. I love them. They look good. They come with a perfect fit. They come with different sizes to fit your ear holes. Some people have different ear holes. They look great. Range of colors, comfortable, and boy, can these puppies hold a charge. 32-hour battery life. Wow. These will last the entire day. Plus, they give you a 45-day happiness guarantee. You can't lose. Give them a try and see what I mean. Tell them, JoJo. Create your own soundtrack for life with Raycon. Right now, you can get 15% off all their products just for being our listeners. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. One more time, buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. So uh, let me ask, what happened with the address? Was it the wrong address, or was it one of these, it's in a building but upstairs, so it has a different address? You got it. In a building, upstairs, it was a bar, and he's, he never told me the name of the bar. He just said 92 Pearl. So I was looking all over, and I, was, I walked by it like eight times, and it was upstairs, and every, no one knows it as that address. They just know it as the bar name. So it was, it was a combo of no phone no bar name raining gay all this stuff that's tough but isn't there that fun moment just that one moment where you 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 get to the other side of that and you go all right i'm giving up i'm going home (laughs) that moment (laughs) where you're like this i'm going home you kind of feel good you're like great i don't have to do anything i'm going that's true i felt guilty but yeah that is there for sure when you have that like i'm out that that kind of a blackjack you know, you're done, and you're like, all right, at least I have no money, but I feel kind of clean. I feel so weird. I haven't done a set in a month. I gotta, And I'm doing Helium next week, the 23rd to the 25th, so I got to get some sets in. And I hadn't put in avails or anything in, in weeks, so I'm going to have to hit up some bar shows and some guest spots and shit because I, I forgot how to do comedy. But the nice thing, because of COVID, you remember you're like, well, I went seven months without doing comedy, whatever the fuck it was. So ah. you can make the comeback. Uh, all right, what else right is going back. on? All right, all right. So 
the car guy's like, hey, you got to get me those plates. Uh, so now I got one more chance to pull this off. Now, this is some real, you know, uh, magician, grand wizard type shit I pull here. Luckily, I track the lift guy down. We get the phone back. He brings it home. I give him like $800. I feel so guilty. He brought it back two days later. Long two days, by the way, but he brought it back to the house. I just threw my wallet at him. I, I ate his ass. It was a whole thing. So, nice guy. So, I go to the DMV again. I make a reservation. I'm doing everything on the up and up. They don't fuck around at the DMV. You can't sweet talk. You can't grift. You can't grease the guy. Nothing. So, you got to do everything right. A lot of red tape, whatever that means. Yes, red gape. And I tell you, I like a little schmooze. I like a little elbow rub. I like a little back door. It's all out the window at the DMV. They give you nothing. They stonewall you. Well, it's one of those things where it's the chicken and the egg, but everybody mutually hates the other. People hate the DMV employees, yeah. but the DMV employees are dealing with the fucking assholes that are going to the DMV going, where's my license? You go, you, you need the paperwork. Wait, yes. I'm not an asshole. That's the paperwork you need. You don't have it. I'm empathetic, and, I'm, and I got to tell you, everybody should go to the DMV once a year because, boy, it's the great leveler. It, you're, you're sitting here next to a fat... Uh, Asian guy, then you got the pregnant Puerto Rican lady, the rabbi, the wheelchair guy, and you're all even. They don't care if you got a Netflix, a podcast, a, a gold medal. You could be Simone Biles in there. You're not getting anything without that paperwork. There's no hookups. No hook. So I go back. I go, hey, look who got my phone back. And he goes, hey, good for you. You got the reservation? I go, there it is. He goes, ah, you got the address wrong. That's a different DMV. I go, ah! You gotta be kidding me! So I hi, I jump on the train. I go to the different address, and they go. I finally wait in line. I do the whole thing, and they go, "Oh, what do you want to do today?" I was like, "I want plates." And they go, "On the internet, when you signed up, you put you want a new license." And I was like, "Well, they didn't have the plates option." They're like, "We don't do plates here." And I'm like, "Ah!" So what do where I do? do? They, and they where go, "Where do they do I go, plates?" Huh? Where do they do the plates? There's a different. This is a, a license-only DMV. That's the goddamn city of nutjes. They queef right on your salad. So, I go. What do I do? I have to leave town. They go. Well, uh, you can come back tomorrow. I go. It's Friday. There is no tomorrow. There's no DMV on Saturday. Well, they go. Well, come back Monday. I go. Monday's a holiday. And they oh. go. Jesus Christ. So they go. Here's the thing. And this lady was actually had some humanity in her, some decency. She writes a little scribble. <laughs> Gives it to me. She goes, go there right now, and I'll make a phone call. And I was like, ah. Oh. Head Boy, back it's down. Rare. It's rare what? you get a good here's the thing. I know. I know. She felt bad. She's like, I know it's crazy. We don't do plates. It's a whole thing. So she gives me this, this, this office. It's downtown. There's another DMV in Battery Park. Who knew? Not too far from 92 Pearl. You got that right, sloppy jalopy. So I jump in there. I take my ticket like a deli queef. I sit there. I wait. I wait. I look around. I judge people. He's got a club foot. He's handicapped. He's on a rascal. He should eat better. And then they call my name. I go, I got all the paperwork. Here you go. I have a manila folder. I was so prepared. I was nice. I had a bow tie on. And she goes, this all looks good. Okay. Huh? Oh, you forgot that. Oops. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You forgot to fill that up. Oh, oops, 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 oops. Knocked it all out. She goes, do you have proof of insurance? And I go... You better believe it, cunt. I pull out my Geico printout. She goes, great. Beep, 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 beep. Ah, oh, it's expired. What? My insurance was expired. Oh, I got it a year ago. I hate things that expire. I don't know if I already talked about this, but I got health insurance. I thought I had auto pay. Everything's auto pay. Yes. I had health insurance for one month. They're like, ah, you didn't pay. You're out. So I don't have health insurance anymore. And I'm like, I thought it was auto pay. You took my credit card. Give me the auto pay. Take my money. I don't want to sign up every month to send a check. What is this, 1998? I know, exactly. God, and they the worst part is they kind of like it. They go, oh, you almost had it there, dick cheese. Kill yourself. You're out. And then they go, next. And you're like, ah, it's like the soup Nazi. Ugh, I hate so this. So I go, hold on. I have my insurance on my phone. I have the app. Let me just update it. And she was like, okay, move to the side. Good luck, loser. And I was like, all right, update it. It won't load. It won't load. I update it. Finally, I get it. Set the new thing. It's like $1,000. Fuck it. Pay it. And I go, hey, lady, I got it. She goes, 
yeah, you updated it, but it doesn't clock in till tomorrow. So I was like, ah, she's like, it clocks over at midnight. So I call the guy. I wait online. I call the guy. Beep, 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 you know, the hold music. I go, hey, man, I have insurance. I just got to get you to change the date. And he goes, all right, I'll do it. Change the date. Got the plates. Oh, oh. Change the date. I run back to the lady. She's gone. It says, out to lunch. She took a lunch break. So I go, ah, out I got lunch. the That's insurance your album. change. I got it all knocked out. What's that? Isn't that your album or your corporation or something? Oh yeah, that's my uh, that's my special YouTube seven million views. Check it out. And uh, so this guy goes dreadlocks. He's like two windows down. He goes, "Are you Mark Norman?" I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh my god, I'm a Tuesday. I'm a fan. Out to what? lunch. What do you need?" I go, "I'm like this close to getting plates. I got all the paperwork." She went to lunch. She's a fat whore. What are we doing here? He goes, "Come on." He goes, beep, 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 beep. "Took like four seconds." He gave me two license plates. I got out the door. Whoa, so there is hookups. There is a hookup at the I DMV. guess, I guess. They, they got to know you personally. Wow, unbelievable. I can't believe all these fans that are in all these places. I know, I know. We got big, we got big fans of the, uh, the, the, the workforce. Yeah, good to know. Well, happy Labor Day, fans and gays. Hell yeah. So I got the plates and it was the clock was ticking. I was like, I'm getting picked up at three to go to Jersey because, you know, that tunnel clogs up like a gay's asshole. And I uh, jump in his car. I went right from the plates to the car, to the tunnel, brought uh, Eric Scott and uh, Isabel Hagen. And we had a great time at the Stress Factory. We sold some shirts and uh, just a hoot and a holler. Fuck yeah. Love the factory. Uh, sounds like a great time. I, I'm so removed from comedy. I got to get back in there. Uh, um, how about this one? All right. You oh, got, you got more. I mean, I'm, I'm freezing. This Wi-Fi oh, sucks. Oh, there you go. You're back. You, you, you're you're good. You go. Uh, well, I just want to throw this at you. Tell me what you think about this. So me and Eric Scott, he's driving his little, uh, little car there, and we're going through the tunnel. Now, it's Friday. It's tunnel traffic. So we're trying to, we can see the tunnel. We're just sitting bumper to bumper. And there's a cop. We're in the wrong lane. We got to go right. We're in the left lane. And there's a cop doing this shit. <laughs> Come on. And everybody's trying to inch to the right to get in the tunnel. He's like, nope, 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 nope. And he won't let you go. He'll like stand in front of your car. The guy in front of us said, fuck it. And he just ran it, rammed it, gunned it, got past the cop, went in the tunnel. Interesting. Very bold, very ballsy. And I said, that guy just ran past the cop in his car. The cop banged on the window as he was driving by, oh. and he got into the tunnel. And the cop can't chase him because he's got a man in his post. And he's on foot, right? And he's on foot, and he's a tad overweight. Well, so he, I like the move. I respect the move. But I just can't do stuff like that. I'm, you know me. I'm a rule follower. And just to have that guy mad at me for a second is more than I can handle. Just yes. the window bang. You know the remember the story of DC when I was with Phil and Sarah, and the guy threw dog shit at my car. I still think about it. There's nothing crazy. The window knocked. This shit. That is so intrusive. You're like, oh god, it's real now. You know, you just feel them right there. It's uh, getting yelled at is one thing. When you hear that, that's a whole other world. So, I'm sitting at the red light with with Eric Scott. And I go, hey man, we got to do that. We're already kind of crunched for time. And he was like, oh, all right, all right. The light turns green, and he just goes. And he cuts past the guy. The guy's banging on the window. And we get past him, and then we just hit dead traffic. And the guy starts walking up to the car. And uh, I go, oh, we're fucked. Oh, He's going to give us a ticket. I'll pay for the ticket. That was my call. Sorry about that. And he goes, pull over, pull over. And I go, keep pulling up, keep pulling up. And he goes, pull over. Now he bangs on the car, boop, boop, boop. Pull over. And he makes you pull over so you can't get into the tunnel after he's done giving you a ticket. He, he brings you out a little oh. bit. He's smart and overweight. But he goes, roll the window down. He goes, what the fuck was that? I told you not to go. And then you go, you piece of shit. Like, you're going to kill somebody? I'm a cop. I told you not to. And you do it. And, and Eric played it so well. He's like, I panicked. I didn't know what to do. I freaked out. I don't know. And he kind of played dumb. And the guy was like, I mean, I should, I could write you a ticket right now. I could, I could haul you to jail. I could do this or that. And we're like, yes, we're sorry, we're sorry. And he goes, get the hell out of here, and we left. 
Oh, that's nice. It's nice to get off, but just that anger, just listening to a yell, I can't handle it. It gives all my blood flows, and my dick gets hard, and my asshole shits. I, I hate yeah. it. It wasn't fun. It wasn't. Uh, Hagen was in the passenger seat, just like ah, she was uh, comatose. But but we pulled it off, and apparently there's another uh, entrance like a block away, so we just went there. But well, yeah, nice. it was a a wild ride. I know a guy who bought a house right by that tunnel, and they kept showing it during the day, and there's no traffic, and you don't realize. Then you buy a house for you know fifty bucks or a hundred bucks or however much a house costs, and then. You don't realize at 4 p.m. you just hear for every day of the week for the rest oh. of your life. Oh, that's just the traffic. Knocks them off the price. I don't think it works that way, my friend. <laughs> but that's why I'm moving to Lake George. There you go, Lake Jorge. I used to hook up with a gal in Brooklyn years ago who lived right on the train. I remember going to her house like, "Wow, it's like a Neil Simon play. The train goes right past your window." And then 20 minutes in, I was like, "Huh." What's that? The Jays going by again. This sucks. So we ran a train, but it was a, uh, it wasn't pleasant. J train. Uh, that's like Soder and Vecchione for years. One of my favorite jokes. Blues Brothers. How often does the train go by? So often you won't even notice. <laughs> and it's just going by an impossible amount of times. Yeah, that's it's a great. visual joke, I guess. But uh, well, that's fun. I mean, I, I can't wait to get back to work now. It's all it takes is someone talking about comedy to be like, oh man, I want to get in the car and drive to a gig and do some shows, but I feel so rusty. Yeah, well, I uh, these guys in the car, I said, fuck, we got a two hour drive here. Let's do some bits. We're bouncing bits. Uh, two of them, I'm like, that's gold. And I did them that night and they're working. So, like, we just had a great productive weekend. I had ice cream, I sold a bunch of shirts. Good times. God, I got to write jokes again. I hate it. It's so hard to write jokes. It's nice it's to take a break. I've been like, so oh, I'm hard. doing a movie. I'm acting. I'm gay now. But now I got to like, go back into like, eh. is this funny? How about people say this? This might be a bit. <laughs> All people right. go, you're telling a story and they go, I'm listening. And they start doing something. But I'm like, <laughs> you can't just call that you're listening. You're not. That's funny. I had that That's last funny. night. I'm at a party. They're like, hold on. I'm listening. And they're just walking around. And I'm like, you're in a different room. You're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fucking you. I'm fucking you. What? You're not even inside me. I'm fucking you. I always bring it back to oh, sex. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I me too. Every there. joke I have is a dick joke. I know. I'm frozen up. Uh, it's Good very movie. chilly here. Um, so I just got to say this. I get a lot of emails about the hog. Where's the hog? The weather's beautiful. Why don't, why don't I see on the hog? Is the hog dead? So the hog, I'm just going to clear this up for the uh, the gays at home. The hog has been hiding in a garage in Queens because they don't want to pay the garage fee. It's two hundred and fifty bucks to store a bike in this town. Oh, red tape. Yeah. Yes, put that in your pooper and and shit on it. But so I had this guy Vincent, great guy, good egg, out in Queens. He Maybe. bought a new bike cover because the cover got fucked. He's such a great guy. This bike's been through hurricanes, snowstorms, just sitting there in Queens in a garage. And I I I go, hey man, I'm sorry. I, I've been slacking on this how's the bike uh, i'll come get it i feel bad let me give you some money whatever and he goes i'm not gonna lie to you i've been driving it the whole time <laughs> what he's been he's been riding around to work he's he's cling clinging Dang it. hey cosmo that's bike rape well look i get it just sitting there you know it's like leaving a a, a gerbil at your house for two weeks you're gonna put it up your ass eventually <laughs> i mean so He's been riding the hog, which I, I was happy about. I was like, good, get some use out of that thing. Get get the motors running. And he goes, but I broke it. Broke the bike? Well, something. I don't know if he broke it, but the bike's old and the chain fell off. And he's like, I'm going to go get the chain fixed. So the chain, he brought the bike to a shop. I said, I'll pay for it. You just bring it there. I'll bring it home once it's done being fixed. And uh, so the hog will be back soon. So now I got a hog and... The Beamer I got in Jersey from my guy. I drove that Beamer back to New York at 1 in the morning from Jersey. It was fucking exhilarating. The Beamer and the Hog. And is it driving better now? Does it feel secure? I mean, it is ship shape. I was fucking... Rah, rah. I felt bad. I stalled three times in front of Isabel, which is so emasculating. But I got the... I was in third gear. I was in the wrong gear. But I got the hang of it, and I drove that puppy out of the stress factory after a sold-out show... Got my check, got into my Beamer, 
pulled it out there, da, 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 got it on the highway, went through the tunnel. I'm going byways, highways, and gateways, and uh, pulled it all right up to 6th Avenue, right on my house. Because he's my Beamer. Yes. MyBeamer.com. Man, it's such a cute little go-kart of a car, and uh, now I got it in the garage, and we drove to Red Hook last night. We drove to the Bronx. We just had a little road trip because the car, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's fun to have a car. I'm worried about my car because last night I, after the rap party, I had about seven cocktails and three cigars and some blow. Yeah. And then uh, I'm pulling out of the gas station, and the sidewalk is black, and the road is black, and my asshole is black. So I take a right. And I just, it was wet because it was rainy. So the sidewalk is like three inches higher than the road. I thought I was pulling into the road, but I pulled up onto the sidewalk, like two wheels on the sidewalk, two wheels on the road, and just drove like on the curb. Whoa. And it's so embarrassing because it's an open bar. So everybody's like shit house. And I'm like, I'm the sober guy. I'm cool. I'll drive everybody. Yeah. Nobody fret. I'm here. Old, reliable Uncle Joe is here. And of course, you know, they're all shit house. And I'm like, just driving on the side my brand new used car and uh, I think everything's okay it hasn't shit the bed or anything it's not leaking gas as far as I can tell the windshield wipers still work so yeah I feel like a chooch though wow man well we're glad you're okay that is uh, those, those dirt roads out there in the woods there's no lights it's kooky Oh, it's why. I mean, I am in the middle of nowhere here it's a lot of uh, it's like a, it's very horror movie up here yeah. Woo. Well, uh, Godspeed. We can't wait to see it. I got to give you a ride in this Beamer. We got to get a photo shoot going of us in the in the Beamer and uh, blowing each other. Uh, it, it's such a little goofy car, too. You see it on the street. You're like, look at this fucking retard over here just parked. I love ret- retards, uh, but yeah, let's do it. I mean, I, I can't wait to get back. We got to hang ASAP. We got to do some hot gay sets and some other bonuses. We apologize to the Patreon folks. It's been a little, uh, it's, it's been some time in between things because I've been up here shooting a goddamn film, but I'm going to give you a bunch of behind the scenes stuff and footage and photos soon. We'll do a new hot gay sets. I think Chuck quit, but uh, we'll do some other shit. There's a brand new bonus we recorded last week with some inside dope, so Get on there, stay on there, and uh, we'll be back in person next week. I'm coming home in a couple days. I'll be a sobbing mess, but it's going to be fun. Hell yeah. Let's do it. And uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get stuff cooking again. Chuck's moving to New York. We'll be together. We'll be back in action. I feel like the pod has got some good momentum. We're rolling. Tell a friend. I'll be in Red Rocks this week, so uh, hopefully any uh, Coloradians are out there and Albany coming up this weekend, and Nashville, and West Palm Beach, and Madison, Wisconsin. So let's let's sell some tickets. Where are you going to be, Sloppy Jalopy? Well, I'm in Helium, September 23rd to the 25th in Philadelphia. Please get tickets. Get tickets soon. It's next week, for God's sakes, or whatever, the week after. I don't know when the fuck it is. And uh, then I'll be at Royal Oak uh, Comedy Castle, September 30th, October 1st and 2nd. And a bunch of other fun dates. November, Helium, Portland. November 11th to the 13th. Portland, Helium, Portland, Oregon. I can't wait to be back in the Pacific Northwest. So get tickets to that. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube. And uh, be kind to one another. And get excited about this film that will be out sometime in 2021. You got a title or is that secret? That's on the DL right now. We're working it. Ooh, baby. All right, all right. No pressure. But uh, we're all pumped. I'm gay. And I can't wait to get you back in the city. I feel like you're a million miles away. I know. I can't wait. I'll be back in two days. And like I said, I'll be a big mess. But I haven't seen my wife in a month. And I haven't seen you in two weeks. So I'm excited to be back. Hell yeah. Well, you're a movie star. And I'm a little intimidated. But we'll get it back. We'll get it back That's going. That's fair. All yeah, right. I'm moving to L.A. All right. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. George is saying cut it. 